Hello viewers and subscribers of this channel. In this video we will derive and explain the formula for settling time of transient response of a dynamical system. Before I start with the explanation I have to mention a few things. First of all I created a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. This post contains all the equations, derivations and graphs. A link to this post is given in description below. Then I would like to emphasize that it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this post and the video. Consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, so here is a brief summary of the formula that I will derive and explain in this video. Here is the formula. And the story goes like this. First of all, we are considering a second order prototype transfer function of a dynamical system. Here, omega n is the natural undamped frequency and zeta is the damping ratio. So this is a prototype that is quite general and can represent a number of dynamical systems. Then, Starting from this system, we can either simulate or compute its transient response. And the transient response is given over here. We can observe that this transient response can be represented by a damped harmonic function whose shape is given over here. Then, on the basis of this function, we can calculate, or better to say approximate, the settling time of such a system. And the formula is given over here. Some of you might immediately stop me and ask me the following question. What is the significance and importance of this formula? Well, I have to say to you that this formula is very, very, very very, 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 very important for the design of control systems. And I will illustrate this fact with the following example. Let us say that you are a control system designer and that you want to design a feedback control system whose settling time is equal to two seconds. So if this is your transient response, you can basically identify a settling time and here's the settling time. And you want this settling time to be smaller than equal than two seconds. Okay, so this is our design specification. Now, we somehow has, have to relate this design specification to the location of our closed loop Poles, that is, to the location of the closed loop poles of the control system. And the equation that you can see over here is very useful since it relates the settling time with the product of zeta and omega n. Here again, zeta is the damping ratio and omega n is undamped natural frequency. And over here, you can basically see the poles of our system. And you can basically see that zeta times omega n is the real part of the pole. Okay? So knowing Ts, we can immediately compute the real part of the pole. And that's the significance of this Formula. Of course, this formula has many other applications, but this is, I have to say, one of the main applications. This formula enables us to relate the settling time with location of the real part of the poles of the closed-loop system. Okay, now that we know the importance of this formula, we can try to derive this formula. And the derivation is not so difficult, and it's actually very nice, elegant, and insightful. 
Okay, so where do we start from? We basically start from the prototype of the second order system that has the following form. So here's our transfer function. As I mentioned previously, omega n is the natural undamped frequency, zeta is the damping ratio. Now, we want to compute a step response of such a system, and we naturally arrive at these two equations. Basically, this is basically the step response in the Laplace domain, where the input is 1 over s, that's the step function. And in one of my previous videos, i shown that the step response can be represented by this equation over here. If you want to see this video or if you want to follow that lecture and learn how to determine and derive this equation, you can basically click over here and this link will lead you to this post and you can also watch the video by clicking over here. Okay, so let's go back to our step response. So here's our step response. And immediately when you see this equation, you should keep this graph in mind. So basically, this is the relation between the step response in time domain and the poles of our transfer function. Here you can, mean, you can see basically the meaning of omega n and zeta. And here are the poles. Basically, the damping ratio is the cosinus of this angle, and omega n is the distance from the origin to the pole. Okay, so let us proceed. Now, let us analyze this step response. So what is interesting about this step response is basically that the envelope of this step response is given by this exponential function. So this exponential function is very important since somehow it squeezes the harmonic oscillations given by the sinusoidal term. Okay, knowing this, we can basically find two asymptotes. Here is the upper asymptote and here is the lower asymptote. And we can graphically represent these asymptotes by this graph over here. So this is our step response. Actually, I should decrease the marker size since I want to make sure that you can see my graph. So basically, this is my step response. And here is the upper envelope. Basically, this line over here is the upper envelope. And here is the lower envelope. Now, this is such a beautiful graph. I like it so much. Basically, I generated this graph by using this MATLAB code over here. You can copy and paste in your MATLAB editor or in your script, and you can reproduce this graph. Okay, now let us go back to the definition of the settling time. Basically, the settling time is defined as the time required for the transient response to enter and stay within plus minus 2% of the steady state or final value. Okay, so let's go back to our step response. What do I do? I take basically the, these two lines. I draw two horizontal lines, this line and this line over here. One is my fa final value, 0 0.98 is minus 2% line, 1.02 is plus 2% line, and I basically need to find the intersection of my step response with this line to determine my TS. Now, by looking at this graph, we can see that we can approximate our settling time as the solution of this equation. Basically, instead of looking at the transient response, we can look at the upper or lower envelope and we can look for the line where the envelope crosses, for example, the upper horizontal line, 1.02. You can also determine a similar result by considering the lower horizontal line. So I'm just for simplicity considering the upper line. So TS, that is the sampling time, solves this equation. So let us determine the solution of this equation. It's not difficult to solve this equation. So what do we do? 
basically we can transform the equation in this form. Then we take logarithms of both sides, we transform the term also over here, and we obtain Ts. So here is the Ts. The expression looks very complicated, and let us try to simplify this expression. Now, how can we simplify this expression? One of the obvious ways is to plot this term over here, minus ln in bracket 0 0.02 multiplying square root of 1 minus zeta square. And so how, this is how this term looks like with respect to zeta. And we can see this exponential function. However, don't be uh, scared because our zeta in reality or in practice will often vary from 0 to 0 0.9. And basically, in this interval, we can see that this term varies from 3.9 to 4.7. So, what is now an engineering approach for approximating this function? Basically, we can simply say that this term is approximately equal to 4. Okay, by taking into account this approximation, we arrive at our final equation. And this approximation is basically valid and it works in practice. Why? Because we are not actually interested in precise values of the term over here. For us, the most important term is this term in the denominator zeta times omega n. And basically, we just need to have a basic shape of the function that will predict the the settling time on the basis of zeta and omega n. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you liked this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.